this and use this because I remember it doing it in high school. Walking into the gym when the lights are off and no one's on the court. And you look back and you say, you know what, one, just one week ago at this very time, we're out there. We're out practicing and playing. Guys are going through drills. We're shooting. You know, we're doing stuff. We're in season still. And it's just so, it, it is. It's a little depressing to think. You're lost. You're a little bit lost because your life has been so structured and regimented around your season. Practices, games, travel, the guys. And now that's done. So you're kind of like, well, what do I do? What, what am I supposed to do now? I don't know how to function as a normal, quote unquote, person. And that's kind of part of what I was, I think that was all running through my mind at the same time. Facing against a, a juggernaut like Finley, you know, you know, you got to come with your hard hat on every single play, every single possession. You got a, a kid like Tristan Thompson that's waiting back there. Uh, Finley, the new, the new king, you know, the new king in town. All you need is, you know, skill and athleticism. And he has both. The thing of it is, he's tougher than nails, so you got to match his intensity. The hat's got to go off to to, to Finley Prep. He's so big and physical, he commands for a couple guys <laughs> to be able to to uh, step up to the plate and try to get that done. You don't uh, do what you what they've done over a two year period and, and, and because of happenstance, but they're a talented team. 6 a.m. conditioning. I will never, ever, ever forget about that. I mean, I, I heard so many stories about the preseason conditioning. Let's go. So, I mean, before, you know, it was getting closer to the time that we were going to start doing it. So I was asking God, and I was like, yo, gee, you know, what are we going to have to do? And you get there, like, you're all pumped up, like, ah, oh, this is my second year. I could do this. I could do this. Go downstairs, get the bottles, find any water bottle we could find, and try to fill up with some water, because Coach Beck was running us in that mile, that mile and a half that he had us to do in, in, in the heat. So I remember that, too. It wasn't even a mile. He said it was a mile, but it was a mile and a half. But it's just memory because you like you can just like always remember just for four. It was like for four weeks just getting up and just running them one four one fifties on the on the uh, football turf and then had to go to class. Oh man, suck it up and go. And like you just have to get up and do it. And now and now you know what I'm saying Godwin was standing at the house and we going out. We coming to play basketball. We going out. Walking around and God went at the house resting, and no wonder this guy on the first day of workout he ain't huffing and puffing like we are. Man, that's probably the number one memory. But you know it all helped. You know it all paid off in the long run. I think that's where the team chemistry and just bond comes because you know everyone's just, oh man, like everyone, everyone, no one felt felt that the 6 a.m. was easy. No one thought it was easy. So I think that brought us closer to, together as a team. We got to do it together. Cause like we all had to grind it out, yeah. and how all, had, all of us had to get shit. through it. So I think that's, I think that's like it's almost. He does it for the conditioning, but it's almost like a like a team bonding situation. One, two, three, three two. Three. So I think it's like you know it's a give and take. It's like it's, it's good in both ways. The message is communicate with each other and get each other on board. You're gonna. That's where you're gonna develop trust and develop that camaraderie in terms of the team is if you screw up, I'm going to pay for it, in addition to everybody else. Whereas if you do your part, we're good, because I'm going to do my part, and that's what we got to get to. No, you sprint everything we do. Everything we do is sprint. Until we tell you, OK, don't sprint unless you walk. Sprint. Coach Pitt got it, and one thing I always say, you know, it ain't the only way, but it's our way. And this is the way we do things out here, so people coming in, you just better be ready to work. We played against Mountain State early in the season, and we beat them, so 
we had a little mindset that we're gonna beat them, but we didn't underestimate them nothing. It was a good game. I mean, we we played them before, so we knew knew uh, their players and everything. We knew what we were getting into, and we just didn't want to take them lightly. Look, here's what you, you and I both know. If we could play Columbus again, you'd love it. If we could play Mount Verde again, you'd love it. Those are the opportunities that you want, again, based on what we did in the past and what happened, right? You know what they want? They want you again. Mountain State wants you again. They're in there right now. All I'm saying is, not to motivate you, but don't be surprised when these guys are coming out like caged dogs, foaming at the mouth, biting your chasing you down, and running it right up your throat, right down your throat, and they punch you in the nose. Don't look shell-shocked over and think, what in the hell, who is it? That's what they're gonna do. What I, what I remember thinking back about that game, I remember our guys getting every loose ball, getting on the floor, you know, bodies just hitting each other and hitting each other. And, and uh, you know, I, I talked to their coach after the game, and, and, and Ronnie was great. And, uh, but he goes, boy, he goes, by the end of that game, you know, he wasn't so sure that his group wanted to get out of that timeout and go back out there again. But they had like, I wouldn't want to say it's an edge, because they had these two huge, tall guys, two Africans. And when I looked at one of them, he's about 7'1 seven, seven, or 7'2, seven, I knew he, I would be the one guarding him. It was, it was definitely a big game for us. I mean, uh, from the start of the tournament, Coach, uh, he had our press clippings of what they posted in the Florida newspaper after we lost to Mount Verde. So he was basically telling us the only way we could get our revenge was by, you know, winning these two games and hopefully they win their games and we can meet up in the championship. Right now, 32-25, you've got them right there. You've got them right there where this is the kind of team, you and I both know, we've seen it, they'll, they'll break. They will break, they'll get discouraged, going, and you can get them to break. You get that to nine, one possession at a time, next thing it's 12, 14, and then, you know what, Justin Martin, those guys, they're just going to start playing. And then they're crossing their fingers hoping it goes in. If it goes in, it might make a game of it. If it doesn't, it's over. But you got 16 minutes left. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three.